Welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm your host, Mark Fusco, here for another episode of the show. And um, so we got another one of these wine labels that, that um, or names that is fairly well known. All right. Again, like I said, I try to grab, I try not to to uh, pick these out necessarily because it's the wines that everybody, well, not everybody, but a lot of people know the name. They probably drink a lot, and I usually try to get the ones that are maybe more under the radar, the ones I've never heard of, because that's the ones I want to try. Not that I've ever had this wine, I've never had it. Uh, I've never had the Coppola wine that we had the other day. But, um, so I drink these also because I've never had them, I like to taste them. But this is a name I keep seeing crop up all the time. Um, and it's no wonder because, I mean, the thing's been around for 120 some odd years, all right? So, this is the 2006 uh, Simi uh, Zinfandel, uh, it's from Sonoma County. That's the AVA is from. And those of you that are watching Sommelier School, uh, we've probably talked about this already. So I don't think it'll be on the second lesson. Though, let's see, this is Wednesday's, let's see, Wednesday, Friday. This is Monday's show, right? Yeah. So if it's on the second lesson, it'll be on this week's lesson. But I think I'm doing Sonoma County, or did it already. I don't know. Anyway. Uh, so, Simi has been around for a very long time. We'll kind of go through that in a little bit. Uh, $8.97 at World Market. And uh, so, this is part of the World Market group of wines that I bought. And it's Zinfandel, which, if you've been watching this for a while, you occasionally have heard me say that it is my favorite varietal. Which is probably why I like that, that Coppola Rosso, because it was mostly Zin. And, uh, I'm liking this one too. Okay, so if you remember on Friday's wine, I mentioned something about plums, right? That 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 the winemaker said they had plums in it. This is the aromas. No, I think it was the flavors. No, it was the aromas. All right, so the bouquet. They said their bouquet had plums. I didn't smell the plums in that one. I smell plums in this one. A lot of sweetness, very, very um, plums and, and, and actually just kind of raisiny type stuff, almost, almost port wine type stuff, which leads me to believe that this may have a fairly high alcohol content. So, no, it doesn't. All right, actually, it's surprise for a Zinfandel is very low, thirteen and a half. I'm used to seeing fifteen percent for Zins. So, um, but it, there's a, there's definitely a sweetness to it. Um, a raisiny type of plum uh, and, and some chocolate. And now I'm getting like hints of dust. Really liking this so far. Yep. Alright, so let's see how it tastes. I'm also smelling a little bit of heat, but you know, whatever. Pleasant. Doesn't kill you. It doesn't really attack your mouth with, with tannins. You get a little bit. I'm getting a little bit of heat from it. Again, I was, you know, I smelled a little bit. 
Um, I was actually thinking that it was going to be a little bit higher alcohol content. So if it's this low, for, for especially for a Zen, and I'm kind of tasting the heat, it means it's not, it's, it's, it's not balanced enough. It's not being contained enough, at least not for my palate. Um, but I get the same, a lot of the sameness from, from the, from the uh, bouquet I get on the palate. I'm getting a little bit of sweetness. The raisiny plum uh, qualities aren't as, as uh, noticeable. They're there, a little bit more subtle. Um, getting the hints of chocolate. And it felt, I hate to say it felt watery at first, but it felt cool. Like, like the initial attack, there wasn't much flavor to it. It was just, it felt like there was a cool liquid, okay, at the very beginning. So it could have been anything. It could have been water. It could have been just grape juice. It could have been whatever. Uh, and this is room temperature. This, this, wasn't, this isn't stored cold. And the initial attack was just kind of a cool, refreshing part, which typically turns me off initially with a wine because I, I shouldn't be just tasting nothingness and just feeling the sensation of liquid in my mouth. I should be getting those those flavors, but it was like that brief, like half second that that's what I got, and then I started getting the, the flavors. But there is a there's a bit of thinness to it. It doesn't feel like there's really that much. Um, Hitting me, I feel like I've I think I feel like I've bit into these fruits and I'm getting the juice from that, but not a lot of the flavors. Does that make sense? I like it. I don't like it as much as the Friday's wine, uh, and they're basically the same price. If I had to choose one or the other, I'd choose the Coppola over this one. Um, but if I had never had the Coppola, I would still like this. I just wouldn't. I just wouldn't be. As excited about it, even whether I've had the Coppola or not. So, there wasn't much spice in there. Now, I'm going to read this to the back real quick. It says something like, uh, well, I'm for, for fresh and fruit forward version of a fresh, with fresh berry flavors and a kick of black pepper spice. I don't get any black pepper at all. I really don't. Full of flavor and definitely balanced. I don't think, no. You know, it, it would probably pair well with food. I don't, I mean, you could drink this on its own. It's not gonna overwhelm you. It's not gonna kick, it's not gonna kick you in the butt. But I think if you had some food with it, I think it would, I think the wine would would come across a lot better. It's not gonna overpower the food, that's for sure. It's not going to be what you remember about the meal. It's gonna be something that is gonna probably complement something. They talk about barbecue, um, pizza, that's probably, you know, I would say, you know, pizzas, maybe some pasta, but not with heavy red sauce, um, with lighter red sauce. Um, if you put barbecue with it, it can't be really spicy barbecue because it's it's not, I mean, it might, maybe it would help out because it's not, I don't know. I think with food it would do better. I think it would actually do better with uh, maybe more of a meat and cheese tray. But again, it's not, it's going to complement the food, but it's not going to be, it's not going to really complement. It's going to, the wine will get better, I think, with the food, but it's still going to, the food's still going to outshine the wine. With that said, um, I don't think it's bad. So I think it's an 85. I mean, I think I'm being overly critical with it. Um, even though it's, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to, it's not, to me, it's an, it's an 85 point wine. I think it's still very good. I think it's tasty. Um, and all that. So quickly, it's kind of go through. Um, so let's go through Simi here. All right, this winery started in 1876 in Sonoma County. Um, it's the vineyards that they get the wines from. Uh, initially, everything was from the Alexander Valley, which is his own AVA within Sonoma County. And then the Russian River Valley, they, they acquired later. And that's where they get all their Chardonnay. At least that's what the website says. They're located in a town called Helds, Heldsburg, California. Um, which in doing my research for the California stuff for Sun up for uh, sommelier school that town definitely comes up a lot so um, it's you know they've been making wine in Sonoma County as you can tell for a very long time Sonoma County actually produces more wine than Napa just Napa just is more 
well known. They just be, you know they they became more famous. But Sonoma makes a lot of good wine. Uh, the breakdown uh, is 76 Zin, 24% Petite Syrah, which the thing is Petite Syrah, from what I understand, is supposed to help you with the body of the wine, and I don't think it did here. Um, and it's just barely enough to call it a Zinfandel because it has to be at least 75% to be called a Zinfandel. So um, I don't know, maybe that Petite Syrah is watering it down too much. I don't know, or maybe whatever. Maybe he needs more Petite Syrah. Um, it's aged for eight months in uh, oak. 11% of that is new French and 7% is new American. So 18% is new oak. And um, that's gonna do it. As always, friend me up. You can buy, keep trying to do the t-shirt. It doesn't say 1337 wine on it, but got the swag. Friend me up on Twitter, Facebook, iTunes. If you see a cool ad somewhere, maybe you wanna check out that product. You know, man, think geek. Come on, it's right up here. Well, if this is the first, if this is the top video, it's right up here. Um, and there's some other stuff on the sides. So check it out and we'll see everybody again uh, next time.